Joining us now to talk about all of this, Mona Amuamara, the Chief Representative of the Palestinian General Delegation to Canada. Hi, Ambassador. Pleasure to welcome you to our program. I appreciate you making the time. Thank you so much for having me. I, I want to ask you in just a moment about the situation in Gaza, but first on the West Bank. I, I wondered, today our Foreign Minister announced that there were a busload of Canadians, for example, who were able to evacuate. Have you or any of your counterparts been involved in those discussions, and, and what do you attribute to facilitating them? Well, um, I think that uh, it all began with the crises, the calls to evacuate from Canada uh, when it started with Israel and uh, Gaza itself. But the problems that were in Gaza complicated the uh, things to another extent. So the conversation with the Jordanian side and um, with Israel facilitated that type of uh, evacuation from the West Bank. Uh, those conversations were, of course, um, supported by our um, leaders, uh, be it the president or the Minister of Foreign Affairs. But as an occupied uh, territory, we don't have any uh, rule over the border. So we would like uh, for everybody in uh, uh, under the crisis to be able to uh, get home and for all the aid to be coming in. But that's, of course, Israel's choice. So, so you, have, you, you are generally supportive of the idea of foreign nationals, for example, in the West Bank, be it from Canada or elsewhere, being of able course. to leave? Yeah. Of course. But, but, so it should be an open border for people to be free to travel, and that's something that the Palestinians have never had. So, yeah. On the situation in Gaza, um, if you could, and I know you're in touch with, with many people in the area right now, convey to people watching right now uh, your assessment of the humanitarian crisis there as it stands. It's a genocide. It's ethnic cleansing. We have uh, 47 families, about 500 people, who were just scraped out of the uh, um, the record, civil record, uh, with its men, women, children, elderly, the whole families do not exist anymore. I would like people to know that our story did not start a few days ago. Our story started decades ago. Um, but unfortunately, the international community did not put emphasis on the need for justice for the Palestinians and uh, to treat the disease, but it concentrated on the symptoms. And we need, actually, to be able to treat the disease, we need to end the occupation and apartheid. Let me try and sep par parse apart your answer there, and in particular, um, talk about the distinguishment or lack thereof, as you view it, from world leaders. And, and I imagine you know, people like our prime minister is implicated in those, those comments from your perspective as well. What is it that you would have liked to see world leaders say in response to this, other than condemning what Hamas did? So what I would have loved to see was prior to this taking place. Uh, for a lot of, uh, as I told you, ages, we have been trying to convey this message to every world, world leader. On my uh, behalf, I spoke to Global Affairs, of course, to, to every party that would listen. But, you know, as a Palestinian, there are not a lot of venues and a lot of people who would actually give you the time to listen. Um, so uh, our concern was that there is going to be an explosion due to injustice, the grave injustice that's happening. And for us, we were hoping that the actual solution would be in the organs that have been created for that particular reason, in the peace process that has been facilitated by the international legitimacy. Now, after, uh, when you tell me what they should have done, um, two things. I, I think the the punitive uh, uh, measures against the Palestinian people as a people led also to green lighting the humanitarian crisis that's happening right now. It, it gave Israel a green light to attack as it was not just um, Hamas or a, a party or had a, a special target, it is actually targeting Palestinians as a whole in Gaza and um, it happening as well with its terror extension and, and, and the occupation forces in the West Bank with uh, um, tens of Palestinians being killed since um, last week. So a lot could be done on the political side when it concerned justice um, and just uh, giving uh, the, the 
enough time to consider all the travesties that have been happening towards the Palestinian people. I, I think what I interpret from what you're saying is, and I, and I hear the point, that there could have been more attention paid by world leaders, by the media, et cetera, to, to what has happened before. But I think you're, you're also going to be aware that my respectful challenge to you is that it sounds a little bit like the, the way that you characterize what's happened in history could be used as a justification for what's unfolded. And I'm, I'm a, I'd ask you yeah. to respond to that. Yeah, I know. This, this uh, point has been uh, pushed a lot by the Israeli um, narrative uh, to, to pretext to things uh, and, and just uh, deciding that the Palestinian struggle has started a few days ago and to identify it as such uh, is a travesty on its own. Uh, we have, uh, for 75 years, we have people who have been living in uh, refugee camps for 17 years in Gaza with 98% of water and undrinkable. So these situations, the unlivable situations, did not just need a little attention. It needed a, a solution. So if there is anyone who bears responsibility, it's not a justification. It's just pointing to the right direction for responsibility towards action that uh, happen on the ground. But, but at the same time, you are saying it in the context of what's happened, right? And you're not saying it's all Hamas's fault, right? You're saying that there's a lot more. And, and I think that would be uh, concerning to, for example, the families of the Canadians who have been killed in the, in the last 10 days or who were killed 10 days ago. Right? Yeah, we have, um, listen, uh, even now, the dehumanization of Palestinians and the normalization of their torture. So is it justified to uh, murder thousands? Now we have more than a thousand of children killed. So who's going to uh, stand and say that that um, is an, a, a justified uh, response from Israel? But nobody, I don't think anybody is. Like what I have heard from world leaders, particularly in the last 48 hours, is I think Joe Biden said in that interview this weekend, it's a mistake to occupy Gaza. You need to adhere to international law. We're not talking about but occupation. But even, even in this case, you need to adhere to international law. You need to not be killing civilians. Law? Don't kill is civilians in act of war. But That's at the same 3, time... 3,000 Palestinians, 60% of them uh, women and children, and you can't identify the rest as um, um, all non-civilians. So, no, it hasn't been... International law has not been um, it, applicable to the Palestinian cause since it was... But what about was, the Israeli civilians? Or do they not deserve the same consideration as the Palestinian every civilians? Every life deserves consideration. But no life has more value than the other. That's our point. You can't build the justification of murdering 3,000 people and saying that now, because international law was not followed, but at the end of the day justifying flagrantly uh, committing a genocide towards and, the Palestinian and how, people. How do you respond to, okay, so the, we put this right to the Israeli representatives, and, and their response is, that Hamas, and, and this is backed up by U.S. intelligence, for example, that Hamas has embedded themselves in civilian infrastructure, that Hamas was planning this for a long time and didn't make sure, for example, that Palestinian civilians in Gaza had moved away from those military infrastructures, fully knowing that Israel would respond in the way it did. What do you say to that? Those are excuses. You um, don't believe that Hamas has culpability here? N that's not what I mean. I mean that when uh, um, when Israel is bombing places, it's because she knows she's targeting uh, Hamas uh, infrastructure. That's a lie. Uh, Israel is trying to hit as many targets as it can, and uh, it has been doing so prior to this uh, event. We had uh, wars uh, on different uh, in, in different years that have been aggressions towards the Palestinian people uh, in Gaza, and every time. When you are bombing uh, schools and hospitals, uh, places where people are fleeing to from the bombing itself, bombing the convoys after telling people they need to evacuate, bombing the border uh, when you're saying you want uh, the aid to come in, bombing the UNRWA storage uh, where, where assistant uh, material is uh, uh, included. It's a way to punish the Palestinian people in general by starving them, by not providing water, fuel, and that is the travesty that the world is looking at this and green light. What are they supposed to do in response then to what Hamas did to them? Are they not supposed to respond? 
respond to Hamas, not to Palestinian people. But Hamas is in Gaza. It's in Gaza because for 17 years, the Israelis have been putting all of those 2.3 million people, half of them children, in this open air prison and treating them with no humanity. People who were dying because they can't get health care outside and the world has forgotten about them. They don't look at them because it's Palestinians who have been tortured. And that's the normalization and dehumanization that okay. I have been talking to and, you about. And, 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 I, and I'm not in any way by putting these questions to you trying to negate that. But can two things be true? Can it be true that there not have been enough value placed on those lives and that there should be more? And at the same time, there be just as much value placed on the innocent Israelis who were killed last week and, and there be required some sort of response to what happened. Wouldn't but anyone in that the, position want to defend is, themselves? Is, is the giving more value to the Israeli civilian life by murdering 3,000 Palestinians, 60% of them women and children, does that bring value? That's the issue. When it's Palestinian casualty, it does not count. And we need to go back to the root problem, to the oppression, to the tyranny, to the occupation, to the um, apartheid, and fix the root problem so people are not basing but their well-being on someone else's demise. But that isn't something that's going to happen overnight. And in the meantime, this act was, of terrorism was committed. And I don't understand how the Israelis are supposed to just not do anything. You're saying not do anything versus commit ethnic cleansing and genocide. That's I don't think it's binary. I, I, I understand that that's, that, that that's that you're positioning it. But to say that there is no Hamas, even though you see that Hamas's rise has been justified, that's the way you describe it to me, they still exist in Gaza. Is Israel just supposed to let them I'm not go? justifying anything for anyone. I'm telling you that the Palestinian people have been under oppression for decades. So to come and put a blame just simply on the Palestinian people is not actually factual. It's just to condemn the victim themselves so you would green light more travesties happening towards them by Israel, the occupying power, which does not want a solution that would bring justice for the Palestinian people. It wants them to be good occupied and die uh, silently away from the public eye and to be able to keep on its travesties against them. Okay, Ambassador, I appreciate you making the time for this discussion. I'm out of time. I have to leave it there. I very much appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.